Hi, it's Scott Vogel on Sex Addiction, and I'm going to share with you how a man becomes a sex addict. The cause of sex addiction is usually, in most cases, linked to the individual's environment. While they're growing up, certain things might happen. Also, as time goes on, the access to pornography becomes easier and easier, and environmental factors can push a person towards sex addiction. There are many shared characteristics between sex addiction and other addictions like alcohol, drugs, and gambling. They all involve the individuals blocking emotions and feelings that they don't want to deal with. And at times, their feelings of excitement, bliss, happiness, coupled with feelings of shame, anger, sadness, frustration, and guilt, is usually the first step in a man becoming a sex addict in using sex to avoid their feelings. The path to sex addiction is where a man starts. So... Let's envision an adult male. We'll call him John. John is a hard-working married man with no children. He enjoys his job. Some negative things have happened in John's past, maybe in his adolescence or his childhood years, his teen years, and then something happens in his life. He might get a pay cut. Maybe somebody in his family passes away. Maybe his wife is indicating she's thinking of leaving. It could be any number of things or nothing specific at all, just something that makes John feel down on a regular basis. And it's natural for people to want to escape negative emotions, especially when they can't see or deal with the cause. So rather than confront the sources of his bad feelings, or the feelings themselves, John chooses to replace them or override them with other sensations. He seeks some feel-good feelings, and he wants pleasure. And that pleasure he seeks is one that he knows he can get from sex. He basically starts masturbating to pornography, and that's usually a good place where they start. There's easy access. He couples it with masturbation to help his brain release those feel-good chemicals to blot out those negative emotions that he just doesn't want to experience. It's important to remember John is not doing this to just pass the time or because he's naturally aroused. He's doing it to avoid feelings and he wants to replace bad feelings or negative feelings with those that are feeling good. Plenty of people drink alcohol for fun without becoming addicts. More people enjoy sex and masturbation without forming a sex addiction. Those people are not using sex to block a negative emotion. They're using it to enjoy. So John is now in the first stages of his sex addiction because he's using sex to medicate to avoid. Now, John will start to repeat his behaviors many times. He thinks he's coping with negative emotions in his life, and in a sense he is. However, at some point, he'll begin to wonder if his routine of pornography and masturbation is actually helping. After he completes these acts of masturbation, the emotions he was trying to escape from return. So he'll need to increase the frequency at which he feeds his addiction, his sex addiction, and that's usually where the first real problem starts to arise. It probably will begin to affect his sex life. So here's where things start to escalate in John's life, the sex addict. At first, he probably uses a bunch of free pornography sites, which give a taste of images, video, chat, live video feeds, all different types of fetishes. Now, as time goes on, he starts to become hooked to what he starts to become more aroused with. And he needs more. So chances are he might start to find his favorite types of 
sexual acting out. And he starts to sign up for free sites to get his fix, the high he's looking for. Now he's financially hooked, and he starts to figure out how he can hide the charges for his pornography habit and his addiction. Of course, these activities cause more than financial problems. They strengthen rather than decrease his negative emotions, such as guilt and shame. And he'll deal with them the same way he has dealt with all his other negative emotions. He'll continue to use pornography more and more. So now the progression of the disease begins. While the fictional John is sketching a map to sex addiction, please keep in mind that things can go very differently from person to person when it comes to a sex addiction. Now, John's addiction for now, we've talked about, is masturbation with pornography. But he could start to maybe frequent prostitutes, or he may have started with them in the first place. Each person starts in a different place. We're just using masturbation to pornography as the, this particular path. Other men may go through sexual partners. Some may start with phone sex or continue to phone sex. They may do online chats or phone chat lines. And then they start to get involved in fetishes. And then they start to confuse some of these relationships with loving ones. But really, the sex is the only reason that John is in here. He's using them to fight off negative emotions, which in many cases is usually attached to loneliness and low self-esteem. The intensity starts to continue as John needs more and more. So now we come to the final stages uh, of the addiction. And John now is fully aware of his problem. His need to masturbate has perhaps hit the point where it's really interfering with his life, where his life starts to become unmanageable, where everything is put on hold so that he can act out in his sexual activities. He might masturbate during lunch breaks and sometimes on the job itself. The obsession, constantly thinking about it. How can he get more and more? And the compulsion, while he's involved in it, that's all he wants to do, it starts to take over his life. With smartphones and other mobile devices, pornography is easily accessible anytime, any place, by anybody. So John has all the tools he needs to further develop his sex addiction. Even without these tools, basically John's higher brain functions have all turned to aid his sex addiction. They rationalize his risky behaviors, and they plot ways and means to serve his addiction. That's basically its function. So now the next phase is John may hit a bottom. He may have discovered, he may have a close call, he may be caught in the act caught lying, caught viewing pornography, or some extremely negative consequences might scare him enough to know he truly has a problem. At this point, John knows what he's risking and decides to stop. Only he can't. This is the final stage of addiction, where the sex addict knows his behavior is causing him more problems than it's worth, but the struggle is great and he cannot halt the behavior. The loss of control brings on feelings of hopelessness, which fuels the shame, and more negative feelings, which of course adds to the problem. And so he keeps on in his unwanted obsessive compulsive sexual behaviors. Now he's using sheer willpower, hoping the addiction will quit before he does. Unfortunately, people suffering from sex addiction can't rely on self-will. It just doesn't work. So what they need to do now is seek help. That's the only way. They cannot do it themselves. They need the help of therapists. They need the help of 12-step fellowships. They need inpatient treatment. They need the help of somebody who can uh, allow them to take the paths to success, to recovery. So, in a quick review, how does a man become a sex addict? 
we talked about the genetic predispositions of one's environment and their access to pornography and the ease in which they can get to it. It leads to poor coping skills and the use of sex to release those wonderful God-given chemicals of dopamine and serotonin and adrenaline to create those wonderful feel-good feelings. That's what they were created for. Then we talked about the path to sex addiction where bad things happen during somebody's youth or maybe not bad things but maybe just neglect or abandonment or some sort of enmeshment or maybe they just weren't taught the proper role of sex in an individual's life. So they start to feel down, they start to have negative feelings and emotions and rather than dealing with them in a healthy way they seek the feel-good chemicals that the brain understands and knows from sex or those same chemicals from food. But we're talking about sex addiction here. Then we talked about the escalation. The masturbation to pornography might be the beginning or affairs might be the beginning or phone sex and the easy access to pornography helps to begin this and then the repetition in coping with negative feelings and emotions and using the feel-good chemicals of sex to overcome them the frequency begins the free premium the free sites and then the premium sites to get the fix and then the charges being financially hooked and lying and staying in secret is what the addict then needs to do so then the progression of the disease continues where maybe if they start with masturbation to pornography, then it's affairs, then it's prostitutes, then it's anonymous sex with multiple partners, phone sex, chats, and it just progresses constantly. Then come the final stages where the sex addict becomes aware that there's a problem uh, and the need to masturbate interferes with their life in a critical way and the addict says I've got a problem here and the higher brain functions are all saying you've got some problems but let's fix them with some drug so let's go have sex and create those feel-good feelings then the addict usually hits a bottom that's usually the last stage before they actually decide to do something they may have had a close call they may have been caught in the act or some negative consequences may just scare him enough to know he really has a problem and usually at that point the addict says I'm really taking some risks and it's time for me to stop I've got to to stop so that's when they really decide to seek help Visit our YouTube channel on sex addiction for more videos on sex addiction and recovery from sex addiction. Go to www.onsexaddiction.com where you can get a free video explaining what sex addiction is, seven symptoms of sex addiction, the four traumas of sex addiction, the four faulty core beliefs created by those four traumas, and of course the solution the seven paths to success in recovery from sex addiction. You'll also find more information about sex addiction and sex addiction recovery at our blog at www.onsexaddiction.com.